Alright guys, Fat Man Outdoors. I don't know if I've done anything that I had this much fun doing in a while. But uh, this was pretty interesting little test. Uh, I'm going to come out with some results. There's going to be some people raise their eyebrows. There's going to be people that I'm sure are going to say, Oh, now I can shoot with that pellet much better than that. And you might do it. You just might do it. I'm just shooting from my rifle, the way I shoot, practical accuracy. Uh, as you'll see in the video, I wasn't uh, laying down on solid bags and taking breathing control and, and doing everything I could do to try to get an Olympic shot. I was kind of doing practical accuracy. You know, I was trying to give myself one, two, three on a target, and then if I needed to shoot, I need to shoot. And uh, just to see if I come in right, what I did with each one of these to make it fair, because my accuracy is not going to be the same as your accuracy, and your accuracy is not going to be the same as Bob's accuracy down the street. So what I did was, I shot five shot group from eight different pellets on eight different targets, and I took away the one flyer, the one pellet that was outside of the closest we could make the grouping, I threw out. You'll see it circled on each one of them. So now let's go to the targets and we can review this. All right, this very first one up here is the Daisy Flat Nose Premium or Precision Max. I'm sorry. It did, there's no listing for a grain. Uh, I could probably have went on my phone and looked it up, but I didn't do that. But it's strange that they don't list a grain on their packaging, but, the, the, but it doesn't. Uh, with the flyer right here, this little pellet shocked me. <clears throat> it, it's a .974 of an inch, so it's less than one inch grouping at 25 yards with, with someone whose shooting is not great. Uh, I ain't going to lie. You know, I, I got bad eyesight. And I probably shake some, so I was impressed with that. But what impressed me with more with these is that flat nose. It leaves holes in the paper. I'll bring it up here, and get it close to the camera where you can see it. It leaves holes in the paper that looks like you shot them with a wad cutter. So what that what that means is. That if you shoot a game animal with that pellet, you're going to you're going to do some damage, and there's going to be a uh, blood trail. There's going to be blood coming out. So if you don't make a uh, immediate death shot, but you hit a vital, he's going, that animal's going to bleed out pretty quick. All right, moving on. The next one. The next one is the Crossman Premier, which is. This one right here, 7.4 grain, and these shot a .887 after it took out the flyer. That those were the ones that 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 I liked because they went in really smoothly uh, for a lead pellet, but they, they didn't shoot too bad. That's less than an inch accuracy. That's that's one minute of squirrel at 25 yards. So and and not taking super time and getting a real good aim and settling myself. So now on to the next one. This is the one that I really liked. One of the two that I really liked. And I was interested in how they were going to do. That was that Gamo Tomahawk. It was a pretty interesting looking pellet. Uh, it's uh, 7.5 grains. It didn't do it. Maybe it's just me. Don't kill me. But I'm just going, you know, off of what I come up with. Uh, after I took out a flyer, it was just a little above an inch, 1.095 inch accuracy at 25 yards. Again, if it would have been something where you laid down and got 100% steady rest, practice your breathing, and took 15, 20 seconds on each shot, then yeah, you probably would have got better accuracy out of it. But for practical accuracy, still that's one minute of squirrel. You know, that's one minute and one ear. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, the H and N. Field target and trophy. They're 8.64 grains. I like this pellet. This pellet's long, so it's going to be really stabilized and flat. Uh, it's got a decent weight, 8.64 grains, and it shot 
.758 inch accuracy at 25 yards. That's three quarters of an inch. That's the size of a quarter at three quarters of an inch coming from somebody who doesn't have great shooting skill with air rifles. I'm not attuned to it yet. So I'm still learning about a good artillery hold and letting the gun just kind of free rest and do its thing when you shoot it, so on and all that stuff. But 7.75 inch, that's three quarters of an inch. I like it. Let's move on to the next group. The next, the first one of the next group is the Crossman PowerPoint Penetrator. That's these little plastic deals with the lead tip. Or actually it's a tungsten tip, they're lead free. Now, I had several people tell me when I started talking about doing this that that little pellet was, was not going to perform well. That at 25 yards I was going to get flyers. I had several people tell me that. So let's see how that came out. They're 5.4 grain and after I took out the one, what I would consider the flyer, the one as far as from the center of the pattern, those pellets shot .740. They shot less than three quarters of an inch accuracy at 25 yards. Now, granted, no wind was blowing when I was shooting this one. It was dead calm. The humidity was high, and there was no sun, no bright sun. So, it, it, is that a 100% true accuracy? Yeah, I think so. I think those. But now, here's what I don't think. I don't think those little pellets, because of their low weight, are going to do well in penetration tests. We'll just have to see. Now the next one up is the one that I really like. I, I want this pellet to work out really well and I'm going to do some more work with it and see if I can't figure out how to draw a lot more accuracy out of it because I believe it's there and if I can get it there, these things are awesome. I mean they look just wonderful. And that is the H&N Hornet. Now the H&N Hornet has a brass tip on a pellet, a brass tip. That thing's going to penetrate real well. It's going to go through bone, it's going to go through cartilage, it's going to go through squirrel brains. It's going to go through a lot of stuff. But let's look at what it did, just to be honest. All right, it's a 9.57 grain, and I took out the one flyer. And after I took out the flyer, it shot .846. So that's about 13 sixteenths of an inch, uh, um, or 7 eighths, right around in there. It's still less than one minute of squirrel, so I'm tickled with that. But I'm going to do a lot more work with that pellet because I really like that idea of having that penetrator point on it and that nice weight of 9.57 grain. It's a long pellet, it's a heavy pellet, and it's got a sure penetrating point. So if you hit an animal in a spot where they may be turned and the fur's balled up a little bit and you gotta get through that skin, uh, or if you hit a bird and it hits in a vein of a feather, it'll get through that vein, you've got that big penetrator point. I really like that pellet. Now, the next one is the Crossman Piranha. Guys, right here is where the wheels fell off the wagon. Uh, Y'all tell, if, if I get a bunch of people disputing what I'm saying here, then I will retest these last two. But here's what I come up with, and, it's, and it kind of, in a way it kind of shocks me, and in a way it kind of don't. Okay, Crossman's been in business for a long, long time. They should know their stuff, but they are a mass production company now. They're not really like the higher end stuff. So the first one I shot was the Crossman Piranha. This is a, a, a strange pellet way smaller body than a couple of pellets that we shot and lengthwise but you can see a different color in the lead okay it's a 10.5 grain so what I think is they've got a, a, a mix that's got either less or more antimony in it that's going to make it way more and it's probably going to change the Brunel hardness of that pellet and that's one thing they don't tell you on here is what the Brunel hardness is I could probably take my meter and test it, but we, we may get into that later, I don't know. But um, for, for practicality of what we're doing right now, it's a heavy, heavy pellet. It's way heavier than anything else. It's at least a full grain heavier. The H&N the Hornet was the next closest to it in grain weight, and it's a full grain heavier than that. 
So it's a, it's a heavy pellet, but it's not a real long pellet. So it, it may have stability issues. Probably hits like a ton of bricks, but it didn't do well in accuracy. After I took out the flyer, the Crossman Piranha got 1.897. So that's about an inch and 13 sixteenths or or seven eighths, probably inch and seven eighths pattern. That's not what that's not good at all. That, that's that's almost two inches of squirrel and that's 60 or 70 percent of the time a miss or a wounded animal. That's not good. So I, what I want you guys, if some of you guys shoot these piranhas and you think that's not right, that, that I, I may have been doing something wrong here or something and got those bad, that bad group from that, let me know and I'll retest them, retest that fella. Now the next one, the Crossman Hollow Point. It's a 7.9 grain. This, this one felt pretty good going into to the rifle. Uh, uh, it, it, it seemed to to, uh, to go right on up in there with no problem and, and, and I like that. Um, I did have one shot that I shot from this that sounded different. Now I don't know if that may have been a damaged spot in the pellet and I just didn't see it because I wasn't looking for it. I was doing general practicality stuff hoping you can take pellets out and shoot it. Uh, but it did sound different, and it may have been the flyer I got. It was quite a bit away from the mag. It would have made, if I'd have used the flyer, the, the pattern would have been over two inches. But taking out that flyer, it shot 1.103. So I tried that one minute of squirrel at 25 yards. That's still pretty good. Uh, and again, guys, you got to take into a, a, account here. I, I wasn't laying down on this gun, trying to shoot this gun for Olympic accuracy. I was figuring it the way I would do this would be kind of a practical thing. I'd put the, the, the scope on the target, I'd give myself three seconds to make that shot, and then I'd take the shot. And that that worked out pretty well on all of them but one. The only one I re would really say that kind of got off target here was that Crossman Piranha. And the, the Piranha is uniquely made. I'll, I'll get one out of here and hold it up so you can see it. It's, I hope you can see that. It's serrated. I'll try to get that in focus for you. It's serrated around the tip. So I just wonder if that doesn't do something to the, the bullet, the, the pellet flight characteristics. Maybe cause a tumble, but it doesn't look like I got any tumbles. I got some really nice round holes. It just didn't shoot accurate. So, and if I would have been getting that in, in a bunch of them, I'd have thought, ah, this is my shooting now. I see something ain't right. But it wouldn't, that wasn't the case. That was the only one that really got out of kilter. Now, which one of these would I say that I'd want to use as the best pellet that I shot? Well, I, I think I'm going to have a tie. And it's because of what I know about ballistics. I'm going to have a three-way tie. If I had to pick pellets to, to hunt with to be accurate and to do what I wanted them to do when they impacted the animal, I would pick one of these three. And one of them is going to shock you. I would pick the h and Hornet that shot .846 because of its penetration that, I, that it's going to have with that brass tip and its accuracy. Its accuracy is pretty good. That's a little over three quarters of an inch at 25 yards. The H&N Field Target Trophy at 7.58. I like that. That's really good accuracy. Three quarters of an inch accuracy. Uh, all, basically from someone who wasn't taking time and trying to make a good shot, that's, that's pretty good accuracy. Now my third pick and y'all get off my back, I can hear you already. Daisy Flat Nose Precision Max. It shot a decent group, 9.74. It didn't shoot a stellar group. It went down three-quarter inch. But, but I believe I could get it down to that. Uh, it, shot, it shot close to just under an one inch of squirrel. But, guys, the, the hole it made impressed me. I do a lot of pistol shooting. 
and, and uh, load a lot of wad cutter bullets. And there's a, a reason that you use wad cutter bullets in handguns, and that's because it opens up a bleed channel. It makes a wound channel that don't close. And that's what these, you look at, all these other pellets, they made ragged holes. Okay, they made where they broke through the paper and the paper closed up behind it. These, those pellets, you can look on the back here and see. It's like you used a hole punch. You know, there, there's no closing that back up. That's going to bleed. That's going to do its job. So, do I 100% say any of these are my favorite yet? Nope. At this point, I would put those in the top three. But as I do penetration tests, that's going to be a big part of uh, how I decide which one of these pellets that I'm going to keep, that I'm going to use. And then the next thing is going to be the, the condition coming out of the can. We're going to do a blind test, 10 pellets that are going to be weighed to see if they're close to the grain, and that they're advertised, and we're going to check them for any damage. That's why I was talking about whether or not the cans were beat up or not. If you look at this H&N can, and I know it's not H&N's fault. This is shipping, I guarantee it. But I don't know if you can see that big dent in the can. But, but it was beat up pretty bad. And you can get, these, these are soft pellet, soft lead pellets. So you can get a lot of damage from, from not a big impact. You know, because these things are lead and they're heavy. If they get dropped, when they hit, you're going to get a lot, of, a lot of damage. There's Even in this Gammo can, there's a pretty good-sized dent in the top of it right there. The, but these were all from shipping. They had nothing to do with the manufacturer. It's how they were delivered to me after I ordered them. I haven't said anything about cost yet. That'll be on the very last video that I make of this series when we take 10 out in a blind inspection for weight and and uh, see if they have any issues of cosmetic damage um, and then we'll reveal prices some of these are expensive guys some of these are not take out the, let little jimmy take them out in the backyard pellets because you know if you get up 25 30 bucks for a box of these pellets you know you're not far from going to shooting a 22 rifle so um, but let, let's uh, see how it works and see after this penetration test and after the the blind inspection, see how everything hashes out, and then we'll look at cost, and then I'll tell you guys what I think is my favorite pellet. I really enjoyed this. Looking forward to doing the rest of it. Hey y'all, if you don't mind, click subscribe, and if you like the video, and click the like button, and we appreciate every one of y'all, and hope to see you in the next video. It's the Fat Man. I'm gone.